Welcome to Shed Manufacturing. On a previous episode, I used this bead roller to put nice little beads on some intercooler piping, but we ran into an issue where the two arms didn't want to stay in plane, so we had to brace it with this piece of C-channel and these big clamps. And that works really well for doing the very ends of clamp surfaces. But what it will not do, because the C channel is in the way of the, the throat, it won't do full length sheet metal. And today we'll be using some of this uh, scrap steel that I have around the shop, this old truck drum brake, and a little bit of welding to make a stand and also some bracing. Let's get right into it. So here we started off with some basic disassembly, getting the old roller dies and gear drive pulled off the main piece and then started getting the uh, surprisingly thick paint off this old piece. Uh, considering it's a Harbor Freight Special, I was shocked that uh, the DA and the wire wheel didn't touch it. It was only the flap disc that really wanted to pull it off. And of course, it just completely dusted the entire workspace. Next up, I started off by getting some uh, scrap steel and measuring up about where I'd want my frame. See, I have a bolt in the end there to make sure I don't cover up the uh, the bolt hole with where the, the frame's going to get welded to. I'm going to cut some dowel pins for later to uh, secure the, the extra dies that I have on the, the rack itself, so that way it can all move around as one solid piece. And then we get over to cutting the two top pieces that'll be the main supports and then in the inside measurement of those two and then cutting the uh, lateral stabilization part. And then because this is all fresh from the, uh, the steel yard I had to clean off all the mill scales that way I had a fighting chance of getting any kind of a decent penetrated weld in. We go for the second little support bracket and dangerously using a flap disc i wouldn't recommend that use that's that's bad form that's that's properly bad form sorry And then came in the uh, the part where I get to tack weld everything. Um, this was uh, sort of a slower process because as soon as I put the first little tack on uh, on that end cap, it just wanted to lift. So I had to pull it off and re-tack it all exactly as it needed to be. Here I go around the uh, the whole unit slowly, uh, well, not very slowly, but I, I don't just go from left to right to try and dissipate some of the heat, uh, usually to try and keep a little bit of the warp out of it, although uh, if I really cared about the uh, warp properties and trying to keep it truly flat, I would have bolted this down to the table. Um, but with it being a... Uh, a quick and dirty tool uh, to do fairly light gauge work. I wasn't that concerned with it. So I just sort of welded a lot and uh, let it warp a little. It took me a little while to get through the uh, the seam joints on these because they are fairly thin gauge uh, pieces of steel. So doing a butt weld on them, it was easier for me to do more spot welds, but with the welder set a little higher to get better penetration. 
For a second there you saw me preheating the brake drum that's going to be used as our stand with my trusty blowtorch. I always like to do that when welding a much thinner material to a much thicker material because it means that I have to put a lot less heat with the welder into both materials uh, which would usually result in the thinner material melting away and burning back. But you put a couple hundred degrees with the torch in it and it melts together much happier. Now truth be told I'm only TIG welding this because I ran out of MIG wire and although I would have preferred to MIG weld this doing the, the two different metal thicknesses and material alloys. TIG welding was the best solution here. If I was smart, I would have actually cleaned off the drum brake a little bit better before I got to it, but here we are. Ow, 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 ow. Ah. I got real hot. Now we have our final test for the machine. Uh, before it wouldn't have even tried to put any kind of a bead roll into material like this. Uh, this is I think roughly two millimeter thick uh, aluminium. Uh, pretty thin stuff but before I did the, uh, the beef up work to this it would just go all over the place. It would go left and right and just wouldn't play ball at all. Um, so here we are, I think that's a pretty successful transformation. So off camera, I went ahead and welded on 12 of these die holders uh, and also welded in the last reinforcement. Uh, so altogether, we've managed to eliminate most of the side-to-side -side play and a decent amount of the up-down play. Obviously, there's no replacement for just buying a more expensive tool, but I think this will get us done. And uh, in our brief experiment, it definitely seems to be a lot sturdier than it was and certainly serviceable for the sort of tools or tooling that we need. Uh, other than that, fully mounted up on the legs and mounted on the on the base, so it can get rolled around the shop pretty conveniently, despite being a little noisy. Thanks for coming along. I uh, hope you enjoyed watching some of this, and uh, follow again.
Held it on these little. Uh, what the fuck are these?